Hello, my name is Matthew Fox. I'm author of this book, The Hidden Spirituality of Men, Ten Metaphors to Awaken the Sacred Masculine. For many years I've been working with the, the issue of the return of the Divine Feminine, the return of the Goddess in our time, which is one of the most hopeful movements of our time. Women rediscovering their wisdom and organizing and bringing out their own beauty and strength. But the older I get, the more I realize, hey, the men are, are lagging behind, and uh, men need to wake up too. And uh, the way I go about doing this in this book is dealing with ten metaphors or archetypes to bring alive what's deepest in men and healthiest in men. For example, the theme of the green man. The green man is an ancient archetype of the spiritual warrior who, who's defending Mother Earth, who's feeling really connected to the trees and the soil and the plants and all. And of course, in a time of ecological peril like our own, no archetype could be more relevant than that of the green man. I also talk about the blue man, which is about expansion of consciousness and creativity, and our powers of healing and compassion. I talk about the spiritual warrior, also about the hunter-gatherer, the fatherly heart and the grandfatherly heart, the role of the senior and the elder in society. And that of Father Sky, the return of cosmology, the return of our relationship to, to the whole universe, not just hiding out in our man-made world. Now, two responses to this book that really moved me. One was from a woman, and she said, you know, I have hundreds of books of the goddess in my library at home, but not one book on the masculine and the sacred masculine. She said, reading this book really woke me up to how men too have really suffered under patriarchy and under uh, the, the unbalance of the yin and the yang energies. We've had too much yang energy, too much masculine energy, too much uh, fire and not enough water. But another response came from a, a Native American in Santa Fe where I was lecturing and he told me afterwards that he works in prisons. And he said, this book has done something for the prisoners that no other book he's ever used has done. He said, it gets them in touch with their nobility. And he said, when you're dealing with prisoners, and especially murderers, he said, they're always projecting onto other people. This book, he said, got them back into their own story and into their own uh, nobility, is what he called it. So for me that was very moving. I don't, uh, I don't, not looking for any more reviews uh, after that one. That kind of hits a jackpot for me, because uh, it is about men discovering our authentic nobility and getting away from the toxic versions of masculinity, the idea that um, uh, winner takes all and that there's one winner and all the others are losers and the, the uh, compulsion for competition and so forth that um, has really ravaged the soul not only of men but of women too and indeed of our planet. Women have a real investment in a book like this for a lot of reasons. One is that of course women have men in their lives, and husbands and lovers and sons and grandsons and fathers and uncles and co-workers. So women want to see healthy men and uh, they're waiting for men to wake up. But also, women have a masculine side to their soul, just as men have a feminine side to their soul. And my thesis is that masculinity has been toxic for several centuries in the West. And if, if I'm right, then that means that women too are walking around with some toxin in their souls and in their psyches, a distorted masculine. So that's why I've written about the, the return of the, of the sacred masculine, the hidden spirituality of men. Uh, ten metaphors for awakening the sacred masculine. Available from New World Library or your bookstore, Amazon.com, whatever. Thanks for listening.